Today, I'm unboxing something truly exciting, the MA Touch ESP32 S3 AMOLED with Touch 1.8 inch FT3168. Let's dive into the box and see what's inside. Inside the box, we get USB-C type cable, a high quality data and power cable, ensuring fast upload speeds and stable connection with modern laptops. The star of the show, the 1.8 inch AMOLED touch display. This is no ordinary display. It comes with rich, vibrant colors, capacitive touch powered by the FT3168 controller, and of course, the ESP32 S3 microcontroller. GPIO connector ribbon cable. This plate ribbon cable breaks out the GPIOs, making it incredibly easy to connect to sensors, modules, or any custom circuits. It's a great touch that opens up a lot of prototyping options. For now, I'm removing it, but later on we will use it to connect sensors and relays to control different types of loads. It's packed with an ESP32 STR8 chip at its core. This board features Wi Fi and Bluetooth 5.0, making it ready for IoT applications right out of the box. The 1.8 inch high resolution AMOLED screen 368 by 448 delivers rich visuals with 16.7 million colors driven by the SH8601IC and supporting both SPI and QSPI interfaces. It also features FT3168 touch driver IC and let me tell you the touch interface is ISPC. Power options are flexible too. You can run it using a 3.7 volt battery or through USB type C 5 volt input. On the output side you get a 2x12 1.27 mm header making it easy to connect peripherals and expansion modules. All the pins are labeled but I can't read them with the naked eye so I'm going to use my and install digital microscope. But don't worry if you don't have a microscope, Maker Fapes has got you covered. You can simply take a screenshot or download this image directly from their official website. It also features reset, boot and user buttons. A WS2812 RGB LED and supports both Arduino and LVGL. So developers can dive straight into GUI development with high precision. This board is ideal for creating mini dashboards, building variable or portable IoT devices, custom UI development, smart home controllers and prototyping touchscreen based applications. On the product page you will also find details related to Wi-Fi, hardware, display, pin descriptions and physical dimensions. First of all you need to go to the resources section on the products wiki page. From here head over to the GitHub page then download the entire zip folder. As you can see, I have already downloaded the folder. Inside this folder, you will find data sheets, examples, circuit diagrams, libraries, and a lot of useful content related to the LVGL project. Now, first go into the LIB folder and copy all the libraries. After that, go to your documents folder, open the Arduino folder, then open the libraries folder, and paste all the copied libraries. As you can see, I have already pasted them here. I currently have Arduino IDE version 2.3.4 installed. Next, go to the board's manager and type ESP32. Make sure to install version 2.0.11. Simply click on the drop down menu, select version 2.0.11 and install it. After that, head over to the library manager and type LVGL. You need to install version 8.3.11. Now, the final step. Open the lvconf.h file and change all the fonts from 0 to 1. And also change the lv font fmt txt large from 0 to 1 and that's it. Alright, let's turn it on and check it out. Just looking at the USB type C port makes me happy. It's so smooth to a touch. It feels like I'm touching water. Colors are incredibly bright. There is absolutely no distortion. I have used some displays before that slightly ruined the colors, but looking at this one, I'm really impressed. Now, let's move on to the programming part. From this point on, you need to follow each step very carefully. To make things easier for you, I have created a template folder. Inside it, you will find two subfolders. One is specifically for storing the Squareline Studio project files and the other is for saving the UI files. This is the main Arduino.ino file, so let's go ahead and open it.
This template coach serves as a foundation for this display using the ESP32-S3 with the SH8601 display and FT316 air touch controller. It's carefully structured to include all essential configurations so you don't need to repeat setup steps in every new project. From initializing the LVGL graphics library, setting up the display and touch drivers, and configuring SPI or QSPI communication, everything is handled here. It also includes the logic to read touch inputs and flush the display buffer. With this template, you get a fully functional and responsive GUI ready environment. All you need to do for new projects is focus on building your interface in logic. You can download this code from my website, elconic.com. And if you need the complete template folder, it's available on my Patreon page along with all the other resources. Now, let's create a folder for our first project and name it my first project. Next, copy the LVGL template folder and paste it inside the newly created project folder. Once that's done, go ahead and open the Arduino.ino file. After that, open Squareline Studio and we will continue from there. From here, you have three different options to start your project. I will explain all the three methods so you can later decide which one feels easiest for you. First, click on the Create button, then navigate to the Make a Fabes tape, scroll down, and select this. On the right side, under Project Settings, you will notice that all the parameters are already pre configured. You don't need to change anything. However, if you wish, you can modify the theme. For now, we will keep it set to light. In the next example, we will switch to the dark theme. You can also enable multi-language support, but since we don't need it at the moment, we will leave it at its default setting. Before clicking the Create button, make sure to select a folder where your Squareline Studio project files will be saved. We already created a folder for this purpose, so let's go ahead and select that folder. Now, go ahead and click the Create button. Now, go to the File menu and click on Project Settings. Under the File Export Settings, select the folders for the Squareland Studio project files and the UI files. For the LVGL include path, simply type lvgl.h. Scroll down and make sure to check the option Flat Export exports all files to one folder. Finally, click the Apply Changes button. By default, you will see screen 1 in the workspace. On the left side, you will find four categories, basic widgets, controller widgets, visualizer widgets, and screen. If you click on the screen, it will add a second screen for you. Click again, and it will add a third screen, and so on. For now, let's keep it simple and continue with a single screen, since our first goal is to get the display up and running. So let's start by adding a simple level. As you can see, the text has appeared on screen 1. While the text is selected, you can adjust its various parameters from the inspector tape on the right side. I don't think I need to explain all of these, but one thing I definitely want to highlight is the importance of naming your widgets properly. This will help you easily identify and access them on the Arduino side. Let's say you have used multiple screens and added over 20 labels like Label 1, Label 2, all the way to Label 20. In that case, it can become quite confusing to remember which label was used for what purpose. That's why I highly recommend assigning meaningful names to each widget. Let's name this one LBL Electronic Linux. Now, let's change the text to Electronic Linux. Finally, you can start working on the text styling. At this point, you have complete freedom to experiment with different fonts, sizes, alignments, colors, and other styling options. The more time you spend here exploring these settings, the better understanding you will develop of how styling works in Squareline Studio. This is where you can get creative, design your labels to meet your project's theme, or make important information stand out visually. Take your time and play around with the styling parameters to see what works best for your design. Our text is now ready. Next, you need to save the project. After this, go to the Export menu and click on Export UI Files. Now, navigate to the UI Files folder. Copy all the exported files and paste them into the same folder where your main Arduino.ino file is located. Now, if I open the Arduino code, 
you will see that all the .c and .h files are automatically loaded. If I open the ui.c file, you will notice that screen 1 and LBL Electronic Clinic are already present. And if we navigate to ui underscore screen 1.c, you can see how much code Squid and Studio has automatically generated just for the text styling. If we were to do all of this manually, it could easily take hours. At this point, we don't need to make any changes to the main code. It's completely ready for the upload. To upload the code, go to the tools menu, then navigate to board, ESP32 and select ESP32 S3 dev module. Again, go to the tools menu and select the communication board. Again, go to the tools menu, then go to the flash size and select 16 MB, 128 MB. Then go to the partition scheme and select 16 M flash. Then go to the PSRAM and select OPI PSRAM. And then finally click on the upload button. The code has been successfully uploaded. You can see how easily we have displayed the text on the screen. Once your display is working, the rest of the work becomes quite easy. Let's change the text color to explain my point. In less than one minute, I change the text color. Now, let me show you two other ways to start a new Squareline project. With Squareline Studio open, click Create. If Make a Fabes is not visible for some reason, click Arduino instead and choose Arduino with TFT ESPI. On the right side, pick the folder where you want to save the Squareline Studio project files. Set the resolution to 368 by 448. Set the color depth to 16 bit. Confirm the LVGL version is 8.3.11. This time, let's change the theme style to dark. It's my favorite one. When everything is set, click create. After that, every remaining step is exactly the same as before. Now, you can see the text hello on the display. It really looks so beautiful. By now, you all must have an idea why I said that the dark theme is my favorite. Now, let's move toward our last method. While Squareline Studio is open, click on the import project. Navigate to my LVGL template folder and inside this folder, go to the Squareline Studio project files folder. Select the Squareline project file and click the open button. After this, all the remaining steps are exactly the same.
all three methods are very easy so you can use any of them to quickly get this display into working form at the end let's also talk a little about troubleshooting if the code doesn't upload hold down the boot button and then connect the usb cable keep the boot button pressed and start uploading the code don't release the button until the code is fully uploaded once the upload is complete release the button then disconnect and reconnect the usb cable so that's all for now support me on patreon for more videos i hope you like today's episode like and share this video with your friends see you in next episode and thanks for watching